powered by MPB, this is Chalkboard Chat, an MPB education podcast, hosted by Jermaine Flood and Tara Wren. To hear this episode and more, visit education.mpbonline.org or download the MPB public media app to listen on your iPhone or Android device. Welcome to Chalkboard Chat. This is Jermaine Flood in for our NPR Student Podcast Challenge episode. We are highlighting two students and their two producers for the podcast that they created with the NPR Student Podcast Challenge. And we want to get all the information and all the story from them about how they did it, why they did it, and how excited they are to have made the finals. In addition to the students and their producers, I also have their instructor or their teacher, Mr. Thomas Easterling. He's in to sit down with us and chat with us about all of this as well. So if you don't know anything about the NPR Student Podcast Challenge, this is a challenge that they open up literally to the entire nation. They receive 2,400 entries from 45 states in addition to the District of Columbia. And this is all for creativity, innovation, and and emotion that the students were able to pack into eight minutes. So this is an eight minute podcast. Two of our very own from here in the state have been chosen as finalists and we have them on. I wanna go ahead and start with Mr. Thomas Easterling, the instructor. Mr. Easterling, go ahead and tell my audience how excited you are for your students to be finalists for this NPR Student Podcast Challenge. I am incredibly excited, not just because they have these accolades that they can make part of their professional profiles as they're getting ready for colleges, but also because I know exactly how much work they put into this process. We actually started in September, and for our competition, we don't really start with an idea that is going to translate quickly into success. This process starts with research, actually. The students do an essay on sense of place, and as they learn about the place they're from in Mississippi, they also have an opportunity to find out the identity of people who have helped to shape their town into what it's become. So they go from there to doing research into those people and sometimes into the institutions that make their hometowns special places. And as a result, they are doing as much research as they are sort of first person narrative as they're talking about, well, in, in this case, Wiggins or Biloxi, uh, Gulfport. And they are making sure that they tell a story that's research based, but is also a compelling story. Anybody can get on a mic and read a research paper, and that would bore every listener to tears. So the real challenge they have is to go from the research to a story that's going to matter to other people. Right. And where you all cultivate this, this is the Mississippi School for Mathematics and Science. Tell me a little bit about this school, because this is actually a residential school here in the state, right? MSMS is our state program for academically talented 11th and 12th graders and students apply as sophomores. It's a public school, it is residential, and it has been around, I think we are gonna have, what, our 30th graduating class this year, maybe our 32nd. I think the the first students came, actually, yeah, the first class graduated in 1990. The first students got here in 1988. But our students come from all over Mississippi, We like to describe MSMS as the most diverse city block in the state because you have kids from every conceivable background. And what's wonderful about it is that they are all united by the drive to thrive in the classroom. I mean, who would have thought at a school of mathematics and science that y'all would be producing a podcast and in addition, highlighting the state of Mississippi with the content that you're producing. So I love that. And for y'all to be the gifted students, I was never that student. So welcome to my world too. (laughs) So I'm super excited to have you on. And it just sounds like such a great program out there. Tell me a little bit about actually getting to speed where you felt ready to submit to the NPR Student Podcast Challenge and I guess the past submission that you had done before. So I've always enjoyed podcasts. I have about a 25-minute commute to work, which is about the Mississippi average, actually. And 
I will listen to public radio, of course, but I'll also listen to stories that, that appeal to me on the way or on the way back from work. And I also always been interested in finding ways to make research papers relevant to students. And when we got to the pandemic, uh, the year of the pandemic, I had started a podcasting club and it was difficult to keep that going because of the distance that came as the result of virtual learning. And the pandemic sort of pushed me off the ledge of being interested into the realization that I really have to do something to give students a voice in the things that they research and write about because once they get invested, once they realize that they have something to say about where they're from, the projects get substantially more interesting. It's not like reading a Wikipedia page on their hometown. They start to see the place they're from, from the perspective of the people who really matter. And these kids are the people who really matter. If you want Wiggins to be the kind of place that people will come back to after they get out of college, well, you, you need to listen to Reagan as she is talking about making Wiggins the kind of place where businesses and restaurants will come and give people something to do so they don't feel the need to drive to Hattiesburg or Gulfport. And I know that the civic leaders of Wiggins want that too. And they've talked about that. You can see in her research that she has been listening to the people who are already sort of struggling with that issue. But now we get it from her perspective. And that's where the rubber really meets the road. She did a wonderful job, as Christina did, in talking about the ways that a community of faith, Grace Baptist Church, can offer people, not just of common faith, but of common culture, a safe place to come and be who they are. And when you have that place, when you feel that you can really be yourself, you have a place where you can put down roots. And it is such a great podcast to listen to because you learn about a community you might not have thought about unless you listen to what she has to say. So using the podcast project to get students to do great primary documents research, to learn the difference between an academic piece and more journalistic piece, and then putting them in front of the mics so that we can hear more distinctly their voices and the things that they have to say about their hometowns it gives them great buy-in and it gives the class great results. Good stuff. Love the story. Just love the backstory. So I want to go ahead and jump right into it. I'll start with Miss Reagan Calvert. She did the podcast called You Can Go Back Home Again. Tell me a little bit about how much fun you had making this podcast about Wiggins. So I'll be honest, when I first started, it wasn't very fun. I knew the situation about the ordinances was going on. And so from my perspective, we were writing a research paper and the first thing I decided to do was to flip through ordinances and read comprehensive plans and stuff like that. So it was a little droning. And so I didn't really know where to take my podcast. So I called Lindy Berry Hill, the editor of my local newspaper. And once I found out what was going on and started to dig into the opinions of the residents of Wiggins, it started to get really interesting and being able to speak with them and talk with them, that was really fun just learning more about the town that I grew up in, thinking it was boring and knowing I wanted to leave, turning into something that I was really proud of. And it was very enjoyable to get to sit down and talk to the residents. How did you all choose your producer? So we are all students at MSMS and me and Brayden are in the same class period. And I assume that Christina and Sawyer are in the same class period. So. After we had finished our research papers, Dr. Easterling made a list of all the topics of our papers and then had the producers choose which topic interested them the most. I can't remember if he did so anonymous, anonymously or not. But after they had decided which topic they found the most interesting, the producers and script writers were paired. So that's how me and Brayden. Cool. How nervous were you or were you nervous at all to be cracking the mic? Like I like to say, how did you even break into wanting to do this and not being nervous doing it? Well, 
I am very nervous right now, to be honest with you, because I'm having to talk with other people, but at least with recording the podcast, yes, it was not as nerve wracking because I would mess up a lot, but I knew I could re-record. But I think while writing the script, I knew what I wanted to say and I knew what way I wanted to say it, Right. what tone. And so if I would listen back, it's funny because I actually had recorded something, I was fine with it, and I hear it again and I recorded my re-recorded my script like three times just to get something I was more happy with but it was more frustrating than anything because it was like I've spoken my whole life and all of a sudden I can't speak enough to get this clip down. Congratulations on just breaking in and just knowing what it is you wanted to sound like right off bat and never having any background in doing it so Congratulations Thank on you. that. You're welcome. I'm going to jump into Mr. Braden Rothhurst. He is the producer of Reagan Calvert's podcast. You can go back home again. Braden, did you have any background knowledge in producing? Nope, absolutely not. We used to <laughs> program called Audacity, and that was a uh... It was definitely an adjustment trying to get used to the program and like there was definitely a lot of a lot of YouTube videos I had to watch to try and make the podcast not bad. (laughs) How long do you think it took you before you were like, all right, here it is. I think I got it now. I mean, well, I'm I'm gonna be honest, I kind of put it off for a little bit because it was kind of frustrating at the beginning, but probably like a couple of days of like really sitting down and like cutting the clips up, the big clips, and like finding a way to put them all together a couple days. Right. I've been in radio since 2003, and I have not Mm -hmm. yet mastered every button on Adobe Audition. So kudos to you. Yeah, well, I'm definitely not a master by any means, but I got put something together. No, you did great. If you got into the finals, y'all mastered something. I mean, 25 out of a whole nation. I mean, 2,400 yeah. entries and y'all got two of them for the state of Mississippi. There was mm-hmm. something right there. If I don't, it was between you, Braden, and you, Reagan, and you, Christina, and you, Sawyer, that, I mean, it was just like the stars aligned and it just worked out. So all because of Dr. E. Say it again, Braden. It was all because of Dr. Easterling. All because of Dr. Easterling. <laughs> He's blushing right now. <laughs> He is blushing right now. Brayden, what was some of maybe other than you having to learn audacity, maybe some of the other challenges mm-hmm. that you ran into producing the episode? Well, I don't know. It was kind of difficult at the beginning because along with the script and like the audio that comes with that, I wanted to incorporate some sounds or like background music that would really give off the feeling that Reagan was trying to give with the whole script. And that was kind of difficult coming up with. And Dr. Eastling wanted us to come up with all of the sounds ourselves instead of going on the internet and finding some sound bites to put in. So that was definitely challenging, but it all came together in the end. Good stuff. Mr. Easterling was really trying to get around (laughs) having to be liable for anything, but that really does bring out the creativity in you too, especially when you don't have like, you know, we've got a database we can drop into for music beds and and Mm -hmm. sound effects and we won't get sued because we're in, you know, that database. Uh So I can understand how trying to get around all of that works out. Uh, Reagan, uh, no, go ahead, Mr. Easton. Well, I was going to say that the NPR Student Podcast podcast Challenge requires us to verify that we aren't using any sounds that are copyright protected. And the easiest way around that is for us to do all of our recording. And I do have to make sure that that we maintain fidelity to that premise. And, you know, I, I, I am pretty tough and, and thorough when it comes to that. <laughs> he, he's going to be that strict teacher there. I love it. Brayden, what grade are you in? I'm a junior, 11th grade. You're a junior. Rangan, what grade are you in? I'm I also think a we're junior. all juniors. Oh, okay. Y'all are all juniors. Okay, cool. Beans. So y'all got a whole nother year to figure this out. Brayden, do you think this is something producing that you can see yourself doing in the future, even though y'all are out of school for science and mathematics? I keep forgetting I'm not talking to mass comm majors here. Mm-hmm. So y'all are y'all are the, the smart kids. I know, I don't know what it is you want to do, but has mm-hmm. has that crossed your mind? Oh no, it's definitely an interesting experience putting together something like that. But honestly, I don't think I could see myself doing that in the future. That was, I think that was too much to deal with. But, <laughs> I, I don't know, not too much. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, 
It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. I mean, but you, I know you all, y'all can figure it out. Reagan, what about you? Any hosting uh, gigs in your future? Every time someone asks me that question, I feel so guilty because they ask me if I want to do reporting, but I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I think it's great. <laughs> I think genuinely when we started doing it, and started recording and scripting and interviewing, I genuinely liked the process enough to think back on what I was doing. I even said in Dr. Easterling's class, is this, is this the moment I start regretting STEM? But no, oh. I really have a passion for math and science, but that does not mean I would not love to do something similar to this project again. Right, right. I can see it. I can see it. Well, I want to move on. We'll go ahead and get into Ms. Christina Zhang. She is the host of Having the Grace to Find a Sense of Place and her producer, Sawyer Levinson, he produced that podcast. So Christina, welcome to Chalkboard Chat. And how excited are you to be chosen as a national public radio student podcast finalist? Thank you so much. And it feels really like surreal because I know a lot of my peers submitted really great podcasts. So I could just imagine like how good the other submissions were from a bunch of different other states. So it feels really cool to be recognized, especially from Mississippi. Like it's great to have our stories be told on a national scale. So let me know a little bit about your podcast and what it's all about. Right. So my podcast basically covers Chinese Grace Bible Church, which is a church in Biloxi, Mississippi. And I live just like a few minutes away. Basically, I'm just going into detail about what they do, and I'm focusing on the Sunday school teacher there named Annie Zhu. She's been working there for almost a decade, and I basically just focused on how she shapes the experience of Chinese youth in Mississippi. Since Mississippi is largely like just a, a biracial state, there's not a lot of just cultural diversity. So I kind of wanted to shed focus on that, especially along the Mississippi Gulf Coast and like how it impacts the community there. Right. Do you go to that church? Or are you a member? Yeah. So I went to the church before coming to MSMS because I live here now, but I used to go to the church and I would oftentimes help out as well with the Sunday school. And if they have any major events, I usually go. Have any of the church members or staff heard the podcast yet? And what reception have you gotten? I actually don't think they know that it was like <laughs> a, a finalist. I know they really enjoyed listening to it when it first like was released. So yeah. So cool. Go ahead, Mr. Eastling. What were you going to say? Oh, I, was, I was just going to remind you that students in all three of the composition classes I teach submitted 30 pieces to the student podcast challenge. And all of those pieces can be found wherever you podcast or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you'll just search for Real Mississippi, R-E-A-L Mississippi, you can find those podcasts. Right. Make sure y'all go out there to where Mr. Easterling is telling you to go to find those. And I'll give you another address at the end of this episode that you can go out there and listen to this as well. So I want to go ahead and get into Sawyer, the producer behind Christina's podcast. Um, Sawyer, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Brayden. Were you a producer before this or was it all just science and mathematics? <laughs> uh, I, I am not a producer, no. Uh, yeah, I'm much more comfortable in biology than I am audio. Right. So was Audacity the platform that you produced in as well? Yes, ma'am. Tell me about Audacity. Is it a free platform? This is just for it, me. <laughs> it, is. Um, it, is, it is a free platform. It, it looks very outdated, but it is, it is easy to work with once you know the basics it, it takes a little bit to get used to but after that it's there's not a whole lot of buttons to, that you'll ever need to use unless you're making like a movie soundtrack or something right right did you use like i don't know if they have like you know really in-depth like preferences in there where you can change the sound and warp it did you have to go that far in or were I, you just I, I had to change the speed of some things and doing that you have to change pitch a little bit too but not a whole lot of anything else how long do you think it took you to produce christina's podcast episode With getting all the audio and everything maybe two hours but getting the audio audio and everything uh recorded was because we didn't have that many mics to use either right i'm gonna ask y'all both the same question sawyer any producer gigs in your future sir 
probably not. Maybe <laughs> maybe every now and again, maybe just to play around with it. And if there ever is anything in the future, just to stay up to date with it. Right. Christina, you, any hosting gigs? Um, Probably not hosting. I feel like, you know, multimedia and all that, it's like, it's a lot of work just getting all the right audio, getting to record and having the right, you know, delivery. It's a lot, but I do enjoy just like covering different events. I'm on the school newspaper. So having the ability to like hone into, I guess my uh, journalistic skills was really nice. And I might consider that in the future, but just like podcasts and multimedia, it's a lot for me. What I really think is amazing is you all are science and mathematics students. And it's like, yeah, I don't know if I kind of want to do this in the future, but it was such, now that I've heard the story and put everything together, it's such the perfect marriage because you are also just into making sure that everything is right and everything is perfect. And you're learning about what that button actually does and not just using it. You know what I'm saying? So you're actually like, so what is this for? And what is this for? And y'all put it together and it just made two beautiful masterpieces. What you got to say, Mr. Easley? Well, ha having edited their scripts, I can tell you that the hardest thing for, for all four of these students was taking a script that started, I think, at 14 pages. And I think both of them had really long scripts at first and whittling it down to something that could be done in eight minutes. And that's, of course, the limit for the student podcast challenge. And I, I can see Reagan shaking her head right now. I, I imagine that might have been hard for, for both of y'all, editing down to eight minutes. It's hard for me just to edit down to 40 minutes. That's <laughs> <laughs> if that's all I can do right now is 40. So I don't blame you. What's Mr. Eastling, one piece of advice that you could give another instructor if they were maybe looking into submitting a piece to the NPR student podcast challenge? Submitting to the podcast challenge is, is really quite easy. And yeah, I think as a class, we made sure that we had taken our scripts, recorded them the way that we wanted to, it was it was the the fruit of of months worth of work, but once you have that actual recording, it's easy to go from the platform you use to the uh, NPR student podcast challenge form and, and dot all the I's and cross all the T's and, and get everything submitted. Their deadlines usually fall in March, and the winners are usually announced in May. This is the second year that students at MSMS have participated. We had a couple of students who won honorable mentions last year, and they took me, those students did, they took me from the lower end of the learning curve to being able to help this year's juniors do a, a smoother, slicker job in moving from the research to the script to the recording. Right, right. Okay, rapid fire now. I'm going to get this all in in one minute and 50 seconds. Reagan, what's one piece of advice that you would give a future student who wants to host a podcast? I know personally, I put too many limits and think about things too far inside the box. So if you're having trouble finding the things that you need within the topic you have, why not just try and evolve your topic into something where you can find more stuff? Good stuff. Brayden, for you, future podcaster, producer who has no clue what he's doing, what's the advice that, you, that you're giving to him? Uh, to utilize other people, get other people's opinions, because those are going to be the people that are listening to the podcast. So I get that. Yeah. Christina, your advice for a future host? Uh, my advice would be to just get as many different perspectives and opinions as you can. You know, it's best to cover uh, like the bigger picture and then just focus on a very small aspect of like a topic. Right. And then Sawyer, for you, what would that be to that future producer? Plan out how you want your, your, your lines and your audio to go together before you start putting it in the, in the program itself. It'll make it a lot easier for you. Right. Good stuff. I thank you all for coming on. If you want to know more about these two students and their two producers, visit npr.org forward slash education. And you can actually go there as well to listen to their podcast and figure out everything about the NPR Student Podcast Challenge. Well, I would like to thank our guests today for joining us from the NPR Student Podcast Challenge finalists, Thomas Easterling. 
Miss Reagan Calvert, Miss Christina Zhang, Sawyer Levinson, and Braden Rother, and their instructor, Dr. Thomas Easterling. They have been such a pleasure to have on Chalkboard Chat. To my listeners, this is Dr. Thomas Easterling and his class who have been chosen as two finalists out of Columbus, Mississippi for the NPR Student Podcast Challenge. They are literally, though, the only school in the nation that had two finalists chosen. So I am just so glad that in the nation, that happened right here in the state of Mississippi. So again, thank you, Dr. Easterling, for coming on. Thank you. We have really enjoyed it. I have enjoyed having you all as well. Thank you, Reagan, for gracing me with your presence and congratulations on your finalist position. Thank you for having me. It was wonderful talking to you. You as well. Brayden, congratulations on the great production you did and being chosen as a finalist for this podcast. He's thank dusting you, his you. shoulders. He's dusting his shoulders off. You're welcome, Brayden. Christina, thank you again for coming on. So excited about yours and sharing your whole heritage with the church that you go to where you are at. So I'm just so glad that you're on as well. Thank you so much. This is really fun. And Sawyer, thank you too for just being, you know, as green as you were. And now y'all are like literally professional podcasters and producers. So thank you again, Sawyer, for coming on. Thank you. All right, everybody. This has been Chalkboard Chat. I'm Jermaine Flood. Class is now dismissed. You've been listening to Chalkboard Chat, an MPB education podcast. To hear this episode and more, visit education.mpbonline.org or download the MPB public media app to listen on your iPhone or Android device. This podcast is hosted with love by ACAST.